welcome uh, to uh, this uh, acoustic webinar, uh, which is the third webinar uh, on acoustics of this year. And the topic is about acoustic simulation for the aeronautic uh, industry. So uh, let's take a look at the agenda of today. Um, so first, we will uh, give a very brief review on the main contributors of aircraft noise. Um, and then we will see the, um, take a look at the action modules, which is also a review of the modules, and see uh, how these modules could be applied on, uh, to solve uh, different aspects of uh, aircraft noise. Uh, and we will uh, address uh, the aircraft exterior noise uh, and the uh, interior noise, uh, with the sources being uh, from the engine or the APU, uh, or from the airframe, no uh, airframe noise. Uh, for uh, the interior noise, we have contributions from the uh, turbulent boundary layer, uh, which is causing noise in the, in the cabin or in the cockpit, and also uh, noise from the environmental control system, uh, et cetera. And after the uh, PPT presentation, I will give a short demo on uh, a vibroacoustic uh, model of noise transmission uh, from outside the fuselage, uh, into the fuselage, uh, and into the, uh, the cabin. And then uh, this demo will be followed by a, a Q&A session. <coughs> so first, uh, a review of uh, all the aircraft noise uh, uh, contributors on which uh, we, FFT, uh, have uh, worked on uh, with, uh, with Action. So uh, we could uh, divide all the contributions uh, into uh, interior noise and uh, exterior noise or uh, radiated noise. Now, let's, uh, if we take a look at the overall interior noise level, uh, we know that this overall noise level is, is composed uh, by many different sources uh, in the aircraft. So some sources are uh, located inside the aircraft itself. Uh, some are uh, generated by uh, devices outside the, the cabin. Now, for uh, sources that are located in the, in the aircraft, uh, we have uh, noise sources from, uh, for example, the environment control system, the avionics electronic system, uh, or some hydraulic system uh, noise, etc. Uh, while these uh, interior noises are, are sources to the uh, perceived uh, interior noise by the passengers, while the main contribution to the interior noise are actually coming from uh, the exterior, uh, mainly uh, from the engine. It could be a uh, turbofan engine or a propeller engine or, or uh, even a uh, uh, counter-rotating open water, which is a new uh, concept uh, of engine. And another part uh, of the exter external noise sources is coming from the turbulent boundary layer uh, created by uh, the viscosity uh, of the air uh, while the aircraft is closing. And these sources will be transmitted into the aircraft uh, by different paths. Uh, for example, by the airborne path or by the structure-borne uh, structure uh, path, uh, meaning that the vibration of the engine will cause vibration of the wing, uh, that will cause vibration uh, through the fuselage, uh, and this vibration will uh, was transmitted into the interior cabin uh, and create noise. And turbulent boundary layer will be transmitted through, uh, obviously, uh, the structure, the fuselage, uh, but also through the, the windows, which are uh, actually a, a, a weak point of uh, acoustic transmission in terms of acoustic insulation. And for radiated noise or external noise, we are talking about also uh, engine noise. Uh, during landing or takeoff phases, uh, this is essentially related to the certification. Uh, so at certification of engine and aircraft, there will be three points 
uh, defined uh, to, 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 to measure the uh, emitted noise of, of engine. And um, APU, the auxiliary power unit noise, uh, the intake, air intake of APU and uh, air uh, exhaust of APU will also generate noises. Uh, and uh, in general, uh, airframe noise, uh, which are of uh, broadband nature, uh, caused by, for example, landing gear uh, or the high lift devices uh, like the slab and flat uh, uh, on the aircraft wings. So as I said, uh, all these uh, noise sources and their transmission paths have been uh, analyzed uh, using action. So today I will uh, pick some uh, major uh, noise sources and transmission uh, paths and, and, and uh, discuss how these problems could be addressed by acoustic simulation. So uh, on this uh, page, we will review uh, briefly the action uh, modules. So interestingly, action has uh, uh, many modules, and all these modules are actually applied uh, in the aeronautical uh, industry uh, for to solve different uh, type of uh, noise uh, sources that we have just uh, seen. So the basic module of Actron is called uh, Acoustics module. Uh, it solves acoustic uh, propagation, uh, like this one in, in, the, in the middle, uh, in free field, or acoustic propagation in, in duct uh, systems, or uh, acoustic uh, resonance in cavity uh, problems. Uh, we can also apply some acoustic treatment uh, using equivalent impedance uh, boundary conditions uh, in this action acoustic module. And this module also features acoustic propagation uh, in flow, uh, so we could solve uh, convected acoustics also in the basic module. Now, as the, the physics uh, become more complex, we will need more advanced uh, modules to address the, the challenges. So on the uh, left uh, part, we have the vibroacoustic branch. So the uh, action vibroacoustics uh, module solves a strongly coupled uh, structure and uh, fluid problem. Uh, so the fluid can be uh, internal fluid in the structure or external uh, fluid uh, outside the structure, and the structure can be coupled uh, on both sides uh, towards both uh, fluid. And we can also introduce acoustic absorbing material uh, like the foams uh, or glass woods in the uh, vibroacoustic module. Now, this module, uh, Actron for Nastron, uh, is a module that couples the uh, modal representation of the structure from Nastron uh, to the physical representation of uh, the acoustic cavity or of the acoustic material in Actron. So it combines the strengths of both software. Uh, model representation for large structure in Nastron and uh, physical representation for absorbing material in Actron. And in the middle, we have Actron Aeroacoustics. I saw uh, general broadband uh, flow-induced noise or a fan noise uh, containing both uh, tonal uh, signals and broadband signals. Uh, to solve aeroacoustic problems, we need to couple Actron with a commercial CFD code. Uh, the CFD code will solve the turbulent flow and actron read the turbulent flow, uh, generate noise sources using acoustic melody, and then that's the acoustic propagation. Then the last two modules are, were uh, designed specifically for aircraft engine problems. So actron TM uh, means uh, turbo machinery. It is very well suited uh, for intake problems of uh, aircraft engines or, or APUs. And the Actron DGM uh, is the uh, it's the module that uh, it's the only module that doesn't work on 
additional finite element method. Uh, so the method is called a discrete Galenkin method, uh, so action DGM, uh, and it is uh, it was developed uh, specifically for engine exhaust acoustic propagation. Now, apart from uh, DGM, all the other modules were are in definite element approach, uh, which means uh, there's no technology barrier between different modules for them to uh, for them to communicate. Uh, so a web uh, error acoustic problem uh, can be perfectly connected to the uh, web acoustic problem to solve a, a bigger uh, problem with more physics involved. Okay, now let's. Uh, apply all these actual modules and these technologies on different uh, aspects of aircraft noise. So for exterior noise, uh, we will uh, look at three main forces. The uh, noise from the uh, main engine, and the noise from auxiliary uh, power unit or APU, and the noise related to the, uh, uh, the general turbulence uh, flow, uh, the airframe flow, the airframe noise uh, by gear, uh, by the landing gear, or by the high lift uh, devices. So first, a uh, the action technology on to solve turbo uh, engine uh, noise. So. This picture shows a, uh, a structure of a turbo engine, and the noises uh, related to the turbo engine are uh, mainly the intake noise, bypass noise, and the exhaust uh, noise by the, uh, by the turbine. Let's take a look at the characteristics of all these noise sources. The acoustic propagation in the intake uh, part uh, is basically a uh, a uh, acoustic propagation in the potential in the potential flow. So the background flow at the intake is a complex one. Uh, however, it is a, a potential flow, or it is close to a, a, a potential uh, flow, meaning there's no rotation uh, term in, in in the flow. And the acoustic propagation from the fan towards outside that can be attenuated by the uh, acoustic liners that are, are designed on the uh, nacelle. So uh, uh, the main topic here is the nacelle design and the uh, liner design uh, in, for the intake acoustics. And the propagation in exhaust is a little different from the uh, propagation in intake in nature, uh, in the sense that we, the acoustic is propagating in a rotational uh, flow, so we will have uh, some shear layers uh, here at the exhaust. Uh, for example, between the, the bypass and the exterior air, there will be a uh, mainly a, a velocity uh, shear layer, and between the uh, uh, turbine uh, exhaust and the bypass. Uh, exhaust, uh, there will be a shear layer that is uh, not only a velocity one, but also a, a, a temperature uh, shear layer, which is more uh, complex one. And also, the acoustic propagation uh, here can be uh, attenuated, attenuated by the liners, for example, the liners uh, in the bypass uh, duct. And the, the, uh, the sources uh, here are mainly the, uh, created by the fan, by the rotating devices, either the fan or the uh, turbine here, and they all have a very tonal uh, behavior, uh, meaning that the sources are mainly uh, remarkable at the blade passing frequencies of the, those rotating devices. So uh, the task of reducing uh, noise is mainly to uh, design the acoustic attenuation uh, that are specifically uh, working on these tonal frequencies. Uh, 
uh, in action in order to uh, represent the noise sources, for example, in the uh, in this air um, turbofan engine created by the fan, uh, we will uh, use a we will plug an analytical representation of the acoustic duct. Uh, it's also called uh, the modal duct. Uh, we will plug this modal duct to the finite element uh, finite element model uh, in, in Actron. So the model duct are analytical solutions of the um, pressure distribution on a certain uh, cross-section of the duct. So the most basic uh, pattern being a, a plane wave on the left. Uh, we have also high order modes uh, that will be uh, that will occur in the duct uh, um, uh, from their uh, from their intrinsic uh, cut on frequencies. So more complex the the, the mode is, the higher the cut on frequency uh, will be, uh, which means only at higher frequencies the complex uh, modes will. Uh, propagate uh, from the fan towards the exterior. Uh, now, sometimes, uh, sorry, I, I didn't mention this one. Uh, so, in action, we uh, can uh, plug the uh, modal duct of uh, three types of geometries uh, the circular one uh, or the annular one, like this one. In the real uh, fan design or rectangular uh, shapes. Uh, but sometimes we will have uh, geometries or shapes uh, different from these uh, ideal shapes. Uh, for example, in this case uh, on the left, I uh, will have the intake of a, a turbo propeller engine, and we see that this uh, surface is, 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 is a, a random surface, it's not an annular one or a circular one. Or sometimes we have uh, the, the obstacles like pylons uh, in the in the bypass or in the in the uh, in the engine uh, structure. Now to represent acoustic sources uh, created on this type of surface, uh, we will need uh, the numerical model duct, uh, which is also a uh, pressure distribution on the uh, duct surface. Uh, but this uh, distribution is calculated numerically uh, using the action uh, solver. Okay, so once uh, we have the source definition, either uh, analytical or numerical, uh, we'll be able to propagate these sources uh, in the finite element uh, mesh uh, and uh, and uh, design the uh, liner impedance that will absorb these uh, sources in order to achieve acoustic attenuation. The liners are uh, those uh, type of honey, for example, the liners in, in the aircraft uh, nacelle cell are these types of uh, honeycomb uh, structures that are, are buried uh, beneath the surface uh, of this uh, liner, uh, sorry, this uh, nacelle uh, interior surface. So we'll have, uh, in, in the liner design, we'll have single degree of freedom liners or uh, double, degree, uh, double degree of freedom liners. And uh, so each of them will have uh, their own uh, specific acoustic impedance. And in action, we will uh, model the liner by their uh, impedance boundary condition. So basically, we will define this surface using an impedance boundary condition. In modeling of uh, engine acoustics, the taking the flow heterogeneity uh, is, is very important uh, because the flow heterogeneity will modify the acoustic propagation from uh, uh, several ways. Now, the velocity will modify the acoustic propagation and bringing a Doppler effect 
uh, suppose at the uh, in, uh, engine in intake, the acoustic is propagating against the flow, and an exhaust acoustic propagates uh, along the flow. And since the flow is uh, anyway an important one, uh, it will uh, modify significantly the acoustic propagation. And also uh, temperature gradient. As we have seen, uh, we have, uh, we have uh, uh, temperature shear layers uh, in the exhaust, uh, which modifies the uh, local speed of sound. And that will uh, also modify significantly the acoustic propagation at the exhaust part. So taking these uh, flow heterogeneity are important, and the way of taking them into account is through a uh, flow mapping uh, technique. Um, in the flow mapping, a first step is to calculate all those aerodynamic fields, including, including velocity, temperature, uh, pressure, and density. Uh, either in a commercial CFD code or uh, in action flow solver. Now, if we have a, we have a potential flow sample at the intake, we can use uh, action for the calculation. Of course, we can also use a CFD uh, solver. Now, for the exhaust uh, flow, uh, action doesn't have the capability to calculate that rotational flow. Uh, we will need a CFD uh, solver. And then the flow uh, calculated by the CFD will be uh, projected on the acoustic mesh uh, in action uh, through this ICFD utility that is a embedded utility in, in action. And then uh, the second, in the third step, the acoustic simulation uh, will uh, naturally take the flow heterogeneity into account. So we are counting the uh, modification of the flow to acoustic propagation. Uh, now some sample uh, examples. So first, a, uh, we are seeing a, a nacelle uh, problem modeled in a 2D axisymmetric model. So uh, we are modeling only this sur uh, one uh, surface, uh, axisymmetric surface to represent the 3D uh, problem. Uh, we see that at the same location, we will apply a modal uh, excitation, simulating the uh, the uh, fan excitation. And then at different locations on the uh, nacelle, we will uh, model the absorption by, well, in action, we will apply admittance, which is basically the, the inverse of uh, impedance. So it Characterizes the absorbing capability of the uh, of the liner, and acoustic propagation will be performed in the near field through final element mesh, and for far field radiation, we will use the infinite element technology. So acoustic waves are reaching this uh, this uh, interface will not be bounced back; it will propagate. Uh, without without reflection to far field, so the uh, microphone positions can be of course in near field, but also uh, in far field. So um, this is a, a picture on, on the on the bottom left. This is a, a flow calculated by action, and on the right we see a color map of acoustic propagation. Here we are looking at four different uh, axisymmetric models. So on the left, uh, we are looking at two models uh, with and without liner, uh, liner absorption. So you can see that on the left, there's the liner absorption, and on the right, there's no liner implemented. On the right, we see the mean flow influence. So on the left, uh, there's a without mean flow, and on the right, the mean flow 
is modifying the acoustic propagation. So that we see that the acoustic waves are, are compressed in a way. And in terms of um, directivity in far field, uh, we see that uh, with the uh, liner uh, designed, we see a, a, a drop of uh, some pressure level measured at uh, a majority of the microphone positions in, in far field. Okay, um, the next example is a APU inlet modeling. So the principle is very similar to the engine uh, nacelle modeling. In this APU problem, uh, we model the acoustic propagation from uh, inside the aircraft to uh, through the APU uh, inlet to the uh, to towards the exterior field, and we also apply on the uh, inner duct on the surface of the inner duct a an emittance boundary condition, and as acoustic propagates throughout the infinite element, uh, we there's no uh, we will have no reflection through this infinite uh, element. So uh, we can calculate a transmission loss, sound transmission loss, uh, defined by the ratio of the incident acoustic energy and the transmitted acoustic energy. Now, uh, so on the right uh, bottom, we see uh, this chart of uh, modification of transmission loss by different admittance values uh, that were predefined uh, and applied in, in the duct. Uh, we see that with, without any admittance uh, or without any liner, there's a very uh, low transmission loss. Uh, and with uh, different values of admittance, we see different uh, transmission loss values. So this demonstrates ability of action to uh, for the liner design in APU inlet. Okay. The following topic is the uh, engine exhaust uh, noise uh, propagation. And for this problem, we will use a different technology, uh, namely action DGM. Uh, so DGM is the uh, stands for discontinuous galactic method. Uh, why we use DGM for this problem, as I explained, uh, we have a very uh, complex rotational flow uh, here. So acoustic propagation through uh, this flow uh, will not be handled correctly using the uh, conventional standard element method that solves the uh, convected m hot equation. So here we will solve a uh, linearized Euler equation uh, using DGM in time domain approach. So although we work in time domain, uh, we can still convert uh, the final uh, acoustic result into frequency domain and have access to the tonal uh, tonal uh, result created by the, the turbine. And uh, action DGM is also a very uh, scalable uh, tool uh, which runs extremely uh, scalable uh, in parallel computation and it's very well suited for very large problems. Uh, so for example, we are able to run a 3D problem uh, involving more than 500 cubic meter problems and to uh, study the non-symmetrical uh, uh, effect by the, for example, the pylon or the installation uh, effect of the engine on the uh, aircraft wing. Okay, now the next topic is the airframe noise uh, created by landing gear or uh, flap and flat. So uh, this noise is uh, has a, a, broad, a broadband nature, and to solve this problem, we will need to, uh, our technology is to uh, use a hybrid CFD and acoustics uh, simulation. 
Now in this hybrid method, a first step is to run a transient CFD solution using a, a commercial CFD tool like Fluent, like Star CCM Plus, or any uh, CFD tool. And uh, we will get the final uh, step of the CFD computation, the time step result uh, containing the uh, acoustic, containing the uh, flow uh, velocity and the flow uh, uh, air density in different time steps. And action will read the CFD result and uh, transform the CFD result uh, flow result into acoustic sources using a acoustic analogy technique. So basically, we are using the light field analogy or a mooring analogy for uh, high Mach number problems, and the propagation is done. In, in action. So uh, here it is a simple validation uh, of a, a simplified landing gear uh, model. It's basically a double cylinder problem and we can see that using this technique, uh, hybrid technique, we obtain a very good uh, matching between the, uh, the action result and the experiment result. Okay, now uh, we have seen some uh, sources and uh, techniques for solving the uh, exterior acoustic problems and uh, design uh, attenuation uh, techniques. Now let's take a look at uh, all the interior uh, acoustics in the cabin or in the cockpit. So they are also multiple noise sources contributing to the cabin noise. For example, the turbulent air flow around the fuselage when the aircraft is cruising, or the uh, duct acoustics by the environmental control systems, uh, but also the uh, turbo engine or the, uh, the propeller uh, noise uh, will also uh, travel Using a uh, through a airborne or even a structure borne path into the aircraft uh, interior. So a major contribution to the interior noise is uh, by the turbulent boundary layer. Uh, this is due to the air uh, viscosity. Um, so a, 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 this turbulent boundary layer is created on the surface of the fuselage of the cockpit and it's transmitted, it is causing the vibration of the, the fuselage and transmitted uh, into the aircraft cabin. And to um, design uh, a, uh, to uh, uh, design attenuation uh, uh, um, to design a uh, uh, method for noise attenuation. The typical uh, method is to uh, implement uh, thermal acoustic material uh, like the glass wool for turbulent boundary layer uh, or use some commercial uh, liners uh, for well, mainly for the uh, this, uh, using the uh, liners of this honeycomb uh, structure mainly for the attenuate the propeller or uh, engine noise. Okay. Now numerically, uh, there are several methods uh, to model the vibroacoustic problem of the fuselage and the cabin cavity. The first alternative is a hybrid model and physical approach. Uh, so in this approach, the fuselage structure will uh, be modeled in a modal representation, which means we will run first a modal reduction in action on the structure. Uh, we can also run this uh, modal reduction in for the cavity, for the air cavity, uh, but the air cavity can be modeled also in, in physical approach. 
and the acoustic material uh, has to be modeled in physical approach because the uh, absorbing uh, properties of this material uh, depends uh, on, on greatly on frequency and it cannot be and, and if there's a, a very important damping uh, in the material so it could not be modeled in uh, model approach. Uh, so with alternative one we are uh, combining uh, action and uh, and action and natron and action capabilities to solve the problem. Um, alternative two is to solve the problem uh, purely in physical approach. Uh, so you will see this, this is our preferred way. Um, now in this approach, action will model uh, not only the cavity, acoustic material, but also all the fuselage, all the structure, including the, the skin, the window, could be a multi-layer window, all the stiffeners uh, inside, and the floor, uh, of course. So, uh, as I said, uh, there are two alternatives, uh, but for, for aircraft application, uh, when the frequency increases, the uh, modal uh, density of the structure uh, will also increase, and at some moment, uh, the benefit of uh, modal reduction uh, in natron will simply disappear. So, uh, in that case, the alternative two uh, is often preferred by us. Uh, now, uh, a problem of uh, alternative two is that we have to model the structure in, in action, uh, but this doesn't mean we have to model them from scratch. Uh, so indeed, in, in action, we have a, a very nice utility called natron to action uh, converter or natron to action translator. So this translator will uh, can easily uh, translate uh, all the natron structure properties into action structure properties. So it's, suppose we have a natron model of the of the fuselage, uh, just by one click, it can be translated into a, a action model, and then in action will simply uh, combine these uh, these structure properties with the uh, internal cavity, uh, with the uh, the um, the uh, foam uh, modeling. Act. So, a typical action fiberacoustic model will take all uh, this list of ingredients into account. Uh, we'll have the fuselage skin that could be uh, made of aluminum uh, or uh, innovative composite material. Uh, we can model the uh, the window uh, by uh, the, the laminated window by different layers of materials. Uh, we have uh, elastic layers and some damping layers in between. Stringer frames, those are the stiffeners, uh, and floor, cross cavities, uh, glass wool, uh, liners, and of course, in action, we'll apply the turbulent boundary layer excitation uh, to the exterior uh, surface of, of the structure. Uh, we can output many uh, in, uh, indicators. Uh, now, one indicator is uh, very uh, interesting. It's called the noise reduction index. So it describes the uh, noise reduction by the whole vibroacoustic system. It is defined uh, as the ratio between the average, uh, the, the square, uh, how to say that the mean square pressure uh, on this exterior surface of the structure and the mean square pressure inside uh, the cavity. So the ratio of these two uh, terms will give us an idea of the noise reduction uh, of that system. Okay, now uh, next topic, um, environmental control system noise. So this basically uh, comes back to the duct uh, problem that I, I presented uh, one month ago uh, in another uh, webinar dedicated to dedicated to intake and exhaust uh, systems. Uh, so I will not develop uh, here again, but basically we are able to uh, analyze the uh, 
a cross propagation in complex duct uh, with bifurcation uh, also, uh, and uh, couple the acoustic uh, fluid part with the uh, structure part to calculate sound transmission loss, uh, but also energy balance uh, in the system. So with a uh, unit uh, energy injected to the the duct system, uh, we can see a, con a distribution of that energy uh, into transmitted power, uh, reflected power, or power that causes uh, structure vibration, uh, dis uh, dissipation, and radiated, radiated power by the vibration of that structure. Uh, so uh, by changing the shape of the duct, or the duct material, or adding uh, Insulation material surrounding the duct, uh, we can also achieve acoustic uh, attenuation. Now, the last uh, topic uh, here is about optimization. So, in acoustic uh, simulation, many times we want to find the optimal acoustic treatment by for example, porous material or by uh, honeycomb shaped liners. And there are uh, many parameters that we can vary uh, to, um, to reach a acoustic attenuation. So uh, as we know that action is um, a code that can be driven by API. API is the uh, application programming interface. So basically, uh, these are the session uh, files uh, that can be scripted uh, in action. So uh, to run a optimization uh, project like this one uh, in the uh, soft air project in which we studied uh, design uh, of the optimal acoustic treatment for an air conditioning plenum, we could drive an optimization chain uh, involving many uh, parameters by a script file or by a, uh, let's say, a an, an commercial, uh, commercial optimi optimization software like, for uh, example, Optimus. And this will allow us to uh, perform uh, a design of experiment uh, uh, test. Now, in particular, in this uh, product, uh, we use API to link patron and action to generate the mesh uh, to uh, vary the different parameters, uh, like the, the uh, power material properties or the shape uh, of these uh, honeycomb uh, parameters. And finally, we found the optimized configuration of this multi-layer code treatment. And uh, it turns out that this uh, numerical prediction of that uh, optimized uh, design uh, correlates uh, very well the measurement of that, uh, of that uh, specific design uh, experiment. So uh, um, optimization is a, is an important task and can be uh, driven by uh, scripting and API. So um, later in this year, in another episode of our acoustic uh, theory, uh, webinar series, there will be a dedicated uh, session on API and scripting. Uh, so uh, please stay tuned on the following webinar in this uh, specific topic. So that is my uh, presentation, PPT presentation. Uh, and uh, very uh, briefly, I will give you a uh, demo um, on this variable acoustic problem. So it's the uh, fuselage loaded by a uh, diffuse sound field. So in this problem, we will study the fuselage, the uh, acoustic treatment inside, and the cabin uh, cavity. Uh, 
So this is a complex fiberacoustic problem, uh, which is loaded by a diffuse sound field or by a turbulent boundary layer from the exterior surface. Now, this diffuse sound field can be uh, applied uh, using a built-in uh, citation in action. Uh, it can also be uh, reproduced in the uh, reverberant uh, chamber test. Now, a turbulent boundary layer uh, can be applied in numerically, uh, easily in action, but an experiment is not that easy to apply a turbulent boundary layer uh, in a test uh, situation. So uh, there's uh, clearly a, a value, uh, added value of simulation uh, for this type of uh, excitation. And the uh, out the uh, out uh, output uh, indicator is again the noise re uh, noise reduction calculated by uh, action. So I will. Share all my screen. Okay, so I um, previously built up this model. Uh, so here I will just uh, uh, guide you. Uh, to uh, view all the different components, numerical, comp numerical components in this fiberacoustic problem. Uh, we will not uh, launch the, the model uh, as it has uh, been already uh, launched, and uh, we will uh, do the post processing uh, in Action VI as well. So this is the, uh, the graphical interface of uh, Action, it's called Action VI, in which we will build. Uh, the action model. So here we are building a direct frequency response analysis, uh, meaning that all the component, uh, the cavity, the diffuse rate, uh, the acoustic treatment, they are all in physical coordinate and there's no model reduction in it. Um, so we define a, a log logarithmic a scale of the, the frequencies from 10 hertz here to 1,500 uh, hertz. And the different components in this model include the fuel slate. Okay. Now it is made Using a isotropic material, which is the alum aluminum material, and uh, the window. Now this is a simplified simplified model with some hypothetical uh, properties. Uh, while the uh, this for demo uh, for a demo purpose, while the uh, most uh, a more realistic uh, problem. Uh, can involve a uh, multi-layer uh, window uh, modeled with solid shell, for example. Now here in this problem, we are using thin shell uh, of the window uh, that has uh, a uh, homogeneous uh, material properties. And the glass wool okay. layer. Oh. It's another color. Okay. And uh, commercial liner, we can uh, again. It's a simplified model. We are using a, a, a thin shell component. While it could be modeled using more uh, realistic and complex uh, uh, configuration. And uh, let's take a look at the the air. Okay, 
So we have the cabin air. Although using a uh, finite fluid material uh, and the uh, also the air domain uh, under the floor. Now, uh, the floor is not modeled in this problem, so it is uh, assumed uh, as a rigid uh, separation between the, the two, these two air uh, problems. Uh, well, uh, we could also uh, model this floor using uh, uh, solid material. Okay, uh, and we see that there are several uh, interfaces and coupling surfaces uh, between the different domains. Now, in action, the modeling is quite flexible. Uh, we can uh, couple different parts that are that don't share the uh, the mesh. Uh, into uh, into a, a global model using this interface uh, technology. So we simply define the uh, example the interface here, this one between the fuselage and the uh, external surface of this uh, air domain. So in this way, these two parts that are not meshed uh, together, that are meshed independently are now connected in this uh, in this model. Okay. Now when this model is run, we will get uh, indicators, many of them. Um, we post-process the uh, result and all these indicators in PLT viewer. Uh, that is the 2D uh, plotting tool in action. Uh, so here I will uh, plot the noise reduction indicator. First, I will get the uh, incident uh, mean pressure okay. square uh, pressure. The mean square pressure of the incident surface. I will apply a noise reduction indicator here and drop the mean square mean square pressure of that incident pressure on the incident part. And for the uh, response in the cavity, in the upper cavity, I'm looking for the uh, cabin air here. And get his mean square pressure in it and bring it to the transmitted part. Here. Okay, now this curve shows the uh, typical uh, noise reduction curve uh, in this variable acoustic problem. Now, coming back to uh, our slide, the last slide here, uh, as we see that uh, by uh, varying uh, the parameters or adding different uh, design. Uh, uh, component, uh, we can see that this uh, noise reduction curve will also change. For example, from the uh, red curve, uh, including uh, the aluminum, uh, aluminum skin and stringer frames, to the uh, black curve that uh, adds a floor uh, modeled in the problem, uh, we see that the, the change uh, it's mainly in the uh, in the low lower frequency range. Uh, now this part is mainly uh, driven by by the mode of the structure. And as frequency increases, we are uh, the problem is is more driven by the, uh, the mass effect. Uh, and we see that there's uh, not uh, much effect of the floor on the uh, the noise reduction. However, when we add the glass wool uh, material. Uh, acoustic material in the problem, we see that there's a significant increase of noise reduction uh, caused by the absorbing capability of that uh, glass wool material. Okay, so with that, I will uh, end my presentation and demonstration.